Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video. In this tutorial video, we'll be concentrating on how to secure your passwords in your scripts. So we've seen in the past um, couple scripts ago, um, when we were doing the SQL server connections, I had gone over how to do the integrated security and then also how to specify a username and password. But the password was simply stored in the script um, in plain text. And I did kind of mention that there was a way to not completely store the password in clear text in the script and to secure that a little bit. So we'll be going over how to do that actually in this video. And then in one of the uh, future videos, we will be looking at the Azure, uh, um, not the Azure, but the Microsoft Secrets Vault, which there is also a version on Azure, but we will just be looking at the local Secrets Vault. But for this time, we're just going to be looking at simply uh, securing the passwords with a CLI XML file. Um, so let's actually get started on that. So firstly, we are just going to actually kind of redo our SQL connection just to see how it works, make sure that we can connect with our password in clear text, and then we're actually going to secure that script. Now in the description below, I will actually also be putting um, the link to our SQL module videos and also the GitHub for the SQL module. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I would highly recommend you check them out before this video just so you actually understand what the connect uh, dash SQL server commandlet does and then a few of the other commandlets that I'll be create uh, that I'll be using because those were actually created by us for that module. So let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to import that module here. So let's do an import and my module is stored on my C drive in a YouTube folder in the SQL folder and SQL module dot ps. Uh, M1. So let's actually run that line here. And then what we are going to do is we are going to connect it to our SQL server. So let's create a variable called connection. And then we are going to connect SQL server. And then our instance name. For me, it's going to be localhost backslash SQL Express. Now, localhost or you could put the name of your uh, server that is hosting that database and then the sql express is the instance name um, which if you installed the sql uh, express version following the video that i created it automatically creates that instance of sql express uh, but if you already have a version of sql installed and you don't have an instance name that is fine you could just put the name of the server or if you have an instance named differently, you would just put the instance name there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the database name, which for us was the logging database. And then our integrated security, we are gonna be setting that to false. And then for that, we have to pass in a username. So we are gonna pass in test ACC. And then our password, we're going to pass in test one, two, three, four with a capital T. Now for this, you would have to pass in your own uh, credentials that you have created on your SQL server. Once again, like that is all in the SQL videos. Uh, so I won't really be going over those right now, but I will be using the script uh, in future videos for how to like send email securely um, and et cetera. There's going to be a lot of things that we actually secure from now on. So once we have that in there, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be invoke SQL select and then we're going to pass in our connection object in there and then for our select statement we are just going to do a select star from log and then all we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we close that connection afterwards and we're going to pass our connection so if we run this here we do see that we do get all of the results back uh, so we can see that we do get all of our log entries back so that is good but right now we are actually putting in the password in clear text so let's actually fix that so what i would do to secure this script if i was to automate it is the first thing to note is that with securing the passwords with cli xml the password will only be accessible with that same account. So 
if you're running um, a scheduled task as a specific user, you would actually have to store the password as a ClientXML running the script as that user. Uh, and I will show you guys an example of what happens if you don't do that. So right now, uh, just so you guys can see, uh, if I do a who am I, I'm currently running as Jack Administrator. Um, so just remember that this uh, white screen here that looks like the PowerShell ISE, but it is VS Code. We are running as Jack Administrator. And then in this other window here, which I will be running shortly, I am running as Jack Automator. So that's just the dark screen is going to be Automator. And then the light screen is Administrator. So what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to run the commandlet get credential. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pipe that to export XML, And I'm going to store that in C scripts, storing passwords. And I'm going to store that in database.xml. So all we're going to do is we're actually going to run this. And now that prompts me for my user. So I'm actually going to put test ACC. And then for the password, I'm going to put test one, two, three, four with a capital T. And here we are. We actually do have that database file, database.xml. So what we can actually do is we actually won't need this line anymore in our script because we already have the credential. So now in here, what we can do is we can create a, um, a variable and we're going to name it account. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a import cli XML, and then we're going to pass in the path and we are going to actually bring in the C scripts, storing passwords, database.xml, that same uh, uh, path that we exported the XML to. So now if we run this here and we look at what is in that account variable, we are going to see that we have the username and the password as a secure string. Now, the only thing about the connect SQL server commandlet, it does take a password in plain text. So we can still do this. Uh, so the way that we would actually um, do this properly here. So we can actually do a username. Uh, so username is going to be equal to account dot username. And then what we can do is we can do a password. Let's just do a capital P here. And we can make that equal to convert from dash secure string. And then we're going to pass in a secure string, which is going to be account dot password and then we are going to want it as plain text so if we run both of these lines here our username is going to be test acc and then our password is going to be test one two three four so if we actually just pass this in here so let's do username and then password now if we run this we still get all of our logs from the database now this is taking into consideration that our commandlet only takes in a plain text password but in theory uh, you should just be able to pass in the password directly if you're trying to send email um, or if you're trying to connect to Office 365 or Microsoft 365 and Azure, um, those accept the secure strings and you're actually going to be creating a credential, um, a credential object. Uh, so those are always useful. We're going to be seeing those, like I said, uh, in just a few videos. Um, but for now, this is simply how to secure your passwords in XML um, files, uh, just so you don't have to put it in plain text in your script. So this is how it works. Uh, and again, this is running as administrator. Now, if we go back into my other VS code instance here, which has the exact same script, 
It's actually opened from the exact same location and it does have access to the database.xml. If I run this as the automator account, you're going to see I get errors um, because mm. the exact error is it occurred due to a cryptographic operation. Now, what that means is Fly XML uses um, the DAPI. So basically, it's a Windows uh, data protection API, mm. which will actually encrypt that file based on the user and computer that you're on. So even if someone has access to this database.xml and copies it to a different computer, they would not be able to access it. It is, it is encrypted with that API that is found on your computer. So they would have to access that computer on that user. So of course, it's not 100% foolproof. Um, if they are able to get in on the computer that you are running the script as the user that you are running the script, they could definitely re uh, reverse engineer and get that password and then be able to execute um, commands logging into the database and all that other stuff. But it is definitely a lot more secure than just simply putting the password in plain text in a script because that way all they need to do is really get access to that file, whether that just be logging into the server as a generic account and then they would be able to see the password in clear text in your file. This way it's much more encrypted. If we go look at the database XML, we see that the password is just a bunch of gibberish here. Uh, so they really wouldn't be able to figure that out without being logged in as that user. So that is pretty much it for how to secure passwords in PowerShell using Cli XML. In future videos, like I said, we're going to be looking at the secrets module in PowerShell to be able to store. And actually the secrets module still uses a Cli XML um, idea for the automation part. If you want to automate, you can never prompt for a password. So we're still stuck using the Cli XML when we're using the secrets module for the master password. And I'll be going over that. And then in the next few videos, we're going to be going over how to send email with PowerShell. And right away when I'm creating the script, we are actually going to be using this type of security in there to be able to securely send email uh, in a script and not have that password visible. So be sure to comment down below if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns. Drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to be notified when those next videos come out. And I will see you guys on the next video.